On this episode, I'm going to show you how to paint the cork roadbed, the MDF, and some of the stuff I've done in my pit area. Hello HRAs fans, this is Kevin Vito Man 50 Welcome to another video. If you're new to this channel and you want to learn how to make your HO slot cars faster, handle better, and do HO slot car scenery, you've come to the right channel. Go ahead and make sure you click that subscribe button and hit that bell so you don't miss a thing. Okay, I've been wanting a pit wall for my uh, racetrack. Um, what I did is I found this. I was looking for something wood that would work real well. So what I did is I found this here at Home Depot. It's 3 8 by 3 8 by 3, three foot long. So it's 36 inches long and it's 3 8 by 3 8. I was a little hoping to find something maybe 3 8 by a quarter inch, but I couldn't find nothing. I looked all over. So I'm going to go with just this 3 8 by 3 8. One thing about it that this is a uh, Hot Wheels car or whatever, but what it is is at least the drivers can see over top of it because eventually it's going to be my Perry wall. They're going to need to see over top of it. So I went ahead and got this, and what I did is I painted it silver. I used uh, some silver that I had laying around this right here. It's a metallic silver sterling, which that's why I painted this. is about the same color as my walls around the track are. It was really close, so I went ahead and painted it with that. Now what I did to get the depth I wanted, what I did is I took the berm. This is one that's not finished yet. I took the regular berm, which most people call it a rumble strip. I've seen people call it, you know, a candy strip. But this here is so when the cars are coming down, you know, the road, they see this, they know there's a turn coming in. Usually it's on the inside, sometimes on the outside, depending on where you're, what kind of track it is. So what I did is I got um, one of these compasses, and what I did is I measured the outside lane to the outside of the berm. And then all I did was I transposed that to this here. So what I did is I went all the way down, all the way down, and as you see, I did a starting of it. So what I did is I took my Dremel tool and put a small drill bit on it for the these small, uh, you know, these nails, these furring nails. And what I did is I marked it. So what I did is I marked each one of these. I took 36 inches divided by, you know, six to come out to six. So what I did is I measured the width and then every time I just marked it, and I marked it, and I marked it, so they're all exactly the same. So this looks even all the way down through here. But I'm eventually going to paint the top of this with the same stuff, so you probably won't see them much anyways. But I'm glad, you know, at least this way if they are, if you still can see them. And it's pretty tough on there. It, it's really tough. This wood's pretty tough stuff. What I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to bend it if I can to make it around the corner up here. So let's go down here and I got something else to show you guys how sometimes just a little bit of ingenuity is how you'll uh, do things. Now, I don't know if you guys all know, my track is floating, it's not screwed down anywhere. The only holding it together is the outside here and the outside here. And what I did is I try to keep it, not squeeze it too hard because what happens is the track bends up if you squeeze it too, out too hard. So the track's floating, no big deal. I mean, there might be a few places I might have to screw it down, which is no big deal. So what I did is I want to go and paint. I painted this white already. And what I want to do is I want to paint every other one red, like candy stripe. And as you see, this is right here. I did this one already. Okay, see, I did that one all the way around the turn, and then I painted the black here for the track itself. Then I did the same here. That's what I did here and here. Okay. So what I did is I figured, well, the easiest thing to do is measure the width and get it right. And what I did is made it the exact same width every time. So what I did is I marked it on the edge and marked it. Boom. Now all you do is you go down through here, you mark each one of them. Just like so. Just like so. See how that easy that is? Okay, now what's this? You take your tape. Take enough so when you do this, it's easy. You just go between the two markings. Boom. 
make sure it's down pretty good. You don't have to do the side here. You want it to be able to so you can take it off, okay? But you want this here and this here as tight onto the track as possible. Okay, then all you do, same thing, boom, 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 all the way around the turn. If you're off a little bit like this here, ain't gonna kill you none. If anything, just measure the net, measure it. We're off a little bit, boom, go back to where it was, and then kapow, kapow. Same thing, every other one, just tape it off. Make sure the tape is flat. Then what I did is I'm using this here. This is where I got, I got this, this apple barrel. I bought this over at um, Walmart. Good stuff. I did the same with the white, same with the black. All the different colors I use are just all this stuff from Walmart. You can either get a big jar like this and be straight with you. I'll probably never use all this. I should have just got a small little jar like this one here. If you're using if you're going to do a, a, a lot of stuff, then buy the bigger one. If you're not, buy the smaller one, because this stuff goes a long way. Just want to let you know that, okay? So, I bought that. Like I said, I bought this at Walmart, too. Just something cheap. And I'll probably never use it. Maybe after I get done with this, I'll probably never use it again. And all this is a pencil. And then I just measured from the corner here to here. Boom, 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 boom. All the way around. You mark every single one of them. Just like so. Okay, there you go. Now, real simple, like I said, when I'm done here, I'll let it dry for a day. Usually this paint don't take that long to dry. I think about an hour is the most I've ever let it dry. Most time we're doing pretty good after an hour. I'll throw my track back together and we'll be fine. Okay, now this is the Phoenix uh, project that I did. I went ahead, this was white, so I painted it black to look decent with the track. Uh, so it looks pretty good. Uh, the MDF board turned out real nice, but the um, cork board, I don't know, it, it looks like it dents real easy. Maybe next time I'll think about not going this route, uh, because if I, every time you push or do something with it, it dents real easy. So this is this turn done. Turned out nice. I kind of got some white paint here, which is not that big of a deal. I can fix that. But mainly I wanted to leave this alone here. Uh, you know, some of the brown and the green that was on most of this doesn't have as much green around here. But I'm going to leave that alone to make it look like it's going ahead and uh, just like a normal um, grounds. I'm going to go ahead and I'm gonna, like I said, I'm going to paint off some of this stuff and get rid of it. And then I went ahead and did the inside here. And then this is an inside for like the way they come around the turn. I thought about maybe doing some um, uh, scratch marks, you know, some tire marks on here um, again like I said it turned out real nice I freehanded most of this this here I did a little different that's when I showed you how I taped it off um, I taped all this off here I didn't do this and I painted it black here too and around the turn here the same thing and then I went ahead and painted the outside black too here because it really didn't need to do it mainly the inside there's gonna be a wall coming around here eventually on the inside here but just a little word to the wise I didn't sand this originally what I did is I painted the white on left the tape on and then I went ahead and taped it like I showed you went ahead and um, painted the red and then what I did is when I peeled the red off it peeled some of the white off because I taped over the white is what I did and painted it red and when I peeled the outer off here, it peeled almost all of this back off. So it's like a plastic, that paint, the acrylic paint is more like a plastic. On this here, I had a problem. On the cork board, I didn't have any problem. So what I did is I retaped it and then just sanded this around on the inside. I, I, when I sanded it, it seemed like the white paint stuck and then I peeled the tape off and then secondary taped it again around the edge here and then taped it for the red. And see how I did around here, same thing, I broke it up with the black around here. That turned out pretty good. I'm really liking what happened. Uh, like I said, I'm gonna probably do some, you know, some tire marks coming around the turns on some of the turns here. And then I went ahead and I did the pit area. What I did is I did the same thing as I did the other here by going down 
measuring it. So what I did is I took this here, which is this. The problem is this is going the wrong way. I was going to use this for the pit area, but if you notice the cars are going the wrong way. So what I did is I just measured this here with this and then did the same thing here. I marked it every so often. I marked it all the way down. Now the problem is I used regular pinstriping tape. The white was quarter inch and then I could use, I got some stuff for my cars. This is eighth of an inch, this is quarter of an inch. You could buy this about anywhere. Any pro striping, you can get like AutoZone, Advance, Shucks, Craigans, O'Reilly's. I got this at Summit Racing uh, and I taped it all off real good. I thought I had the board cleaned enough, but if you look, it didn't look like it. I cleaned it enough or something because it looks like the tape underneath is actually dirty. So uh, maybe I didn't clean the board enough or whatever, but I figured that's probably what I'll do. Maybe I'll peel this all back up and start over again. But this is how the pit area looked. It doesn't look too bad. It's, it's a decent start for coming into the pit area. I'll probably end up, like I said, build, probably buying buildings or turning this into a pit building or whatever. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to figure out a way to take this. They show where you steam it like um, water steam and then you can bend it around the turn because this stuff will not bend at all. It only bend that little bit and I need it to go. I like to take it right around this inside here all the way around and then from here out where the pit area will come out this end here is what I'm thinking of. So that's going to be my next project is how to figure out how to get this done. I've seen a lot of guys doing the, uh, like I said, steam, steam bending. So I'm going to try to see if I can figure out how to steam bend this. And then I'll show you how it, I've done it and we'll go from there. Okay? Okay, now a lot of that was kind of, some of it was kind of difficult, some was kind of easy. The cork roll bed just pretty much sucks up the paint. I used acrylic paint. This is one of the paints I used for the black. This is the gloss. I used for the black around the track. I didn't use much, so you don't need to buy a lot of it. I mean, a smaller one of these could have been better. They're at Walmart, like 50 cents. Like I paid two, almost three bucks for this one here. And a lot of it was pretty decent. Like I said, the cork road bed was a lot easier. The MDF, you got to sand it first. If you're going to paint it, then sand it, and then repaint it with the white. What you do is what I did is I painted it with the white. And then when I peeled it off, like I said, uh, it peeled a lot of the stuff off of the uh, track or off of the MDF. And then when I painted the red on there, it just peeled a lot of it, most of all of it up. So what I did is I retaped everything, knocked as much of the paint off as I could down, repainted it white, pulled the tape off, let it dry for a couple days, retaped around the white, and then taped the individual over the white to paint the red on. And I use, this is gloss red, and uh, I've had this accent paint. These are both acrylics. Acrylic paint works real well. So on the cork road bed, it, like I said, kind of sucked it up. On rule of thumb, three coats. Three coats. Don't do one, don't do two. Do th it no less than three coats. You could probably go a little more depending how thick you want your paint. You don't want it too thick because you paint it too thick, then if your car slides around it, it could grab the red marker and flip the car off the track. You could always do it in tape if you wanted to. I've seen guys do it in tape. I felt like I wanted to do it in paint. It seemed to work okay. You can always cuff it down. Uh, something I'm going to try here in the future, I'm going to take a little bit of Indian ink and rub around the... Uh, cork row bed, some of the paint, they kind of dull it out a little bit to make it look like it's a little more wear. Um, the pit area, uh, I think what I'm going to do is the striping, I think I'm going to paint the striping, I'm going to retape everything, clean it off all real good. I'm going to try one more time with the pin striping and see how it works. If it don't work, then I'm going to stripe it all off, paint it, and then do it that way. Then I'm going to try to figure out either some type of buildings or something to make the pit area look nice, okay? So I hope this helps you out. I hope all my videos have been helping you guys out. Please like, subscribe. Make sure if you're watching these videos, I would appreciate if you'd subscribe. Uh, I'd really like to know if I'm doing things right. Make sure in the uh, comments below that you're tell, asking me stuff, telling me stuff, maybe if I'm doing something different or wrong. Uh, let me know. Okay, so everybody have a good day and keep your pin in the slot.